Hey there folks, there's another problem for us to solve. This time, we have a guy who's shooting himself out of a spring-loaded cannon. Let's see if we can figure out how fast he'll be moving using our conservation of energy equation. I'll start things off with a picture. We can insert our typical XY coordinate system and then draw the guy sitting in the cannon. I've also included a label for the length of the cannon off to the side. There's no indication whether this cannon should be pointing straight up or at some angle, but that's the great thing about using energy methods to solve problems. Who cares what direction he's pointing in? All we need is the initial and the final height. We're given that he travels 2.5 meters from his initial starting position inside the cannon, so I'll keep things simple and call the initial height y is equal to zero, and the final y is equal to 2.5 meters. As long as that's included, you can draw the picture however you like. Let's start using our equation. We know that as this guy is sitting inside the cannon waiting to be launched, he isn't moving. Therefore, the initial kinetic energy is equal to zero. Since we set the initial height to zero, we don't have to worry about the potential energy of his position. We do, however, have to include the potential elastic energy of the spring. This is what's going to propel him outwards. The other work that's done on the system stems from the kinetic friction he experiences while sliding out the barrel. On the other side of our expression, we have the final kinetic energy, which contains that final velocity variable that we want to solve for. And finally, since he's no longer in contact with the spring after being launched, the elastic potential energy can be ignored and we'll switch to the potential energy of position which is the standard MGY. The X variable here represents the compression distance of the spring, which wasn't given to us, but we can pull up a quick reminder on the elastic force equation. We were given the force and the spring constant back in the problem description. Therefore, we can represent X by the ratio of those two quantities like this. Instead of leaving things squared inside parentheses, I'll cancel out the k coefficient in front with one of the k's that are in the new denominator and then squish it all together in a new fraction, like this. With that taken care of, we can start solving for v sub f. Let's start by moving the potential energy on the right-hand side over to the left. We can multiply both sides by two, divide both sides by the performer's mass, and then take the square root of both sides to get the final velocity that we need. If we plug in the numbers and multiply carefully, we'll get the following result. Instead of truncating this to the smallest number of significant figures back in the problem description, which would be 1, right, because we have numbers like 40 and 60, which only contain one significant figure, instead, I'm just going to leave this answer as 15.5. If that seems inconsistent to you, I certainly understand, since I feel the same way, but I think it's more important to match the answer that's provided in the back of the book so that everyone can get this problem correct. Um, I don't want to mislead anybody and have them lose points because of uh, an approximation that I made. So with that said, that's it. We're done. Stay safe, stay warm, and take care. See you all next time.